All right, Ben May, welcome to the Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and Company, presented by Trade Zero. Dave, you love Trade Zero. I do, but Eddie, stock market hasn't been great to me lately. There's been pens getting smushed. I don't Listen, get Trade Zero, buy pen, put it in the locker, open the locker in a year, make money. That's what you got to do. Get Trade Zero. I'm not a financial advisor, Eddie. I want that on the record. TradeZero.us slash Dave. Uh, you're going to get five months of pro trading practice for a free package, for free $10 slice pizza gift card. That's $305 worth of value because I guess I'm like Pitbull now. I'm Mr. International, new, new Mr. 305. Um, minimum account, $2,500, but I'm telling you, Right now, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. We're not going anywhere, Eddie. We're going to be launching Indiana pretty soon. We're going to get states. Get your trade zero. Get it. I don't like seeing us down 6%. I don't want to give back my houses, Eddie. So get trade zero, uh, trade zero dot US slash Dave. And again, you get 25, no, you get $305 of value, but you do need 2,500 bucks. Just put it in, forget about it, lock it up, bang. So we have a big show today. We got a big guest coming on a little bit. Ben Askren, man yeah, who, of the fucking who? weekend. And, and and we asked him to come on. Good job by you getting him on. And and I know who he is. I've followed him for a while. I think he's a smart, funny guy. He uh, entertaining. He obviously first came to maybe my mainstream attention, but not of MMA fans when he fight the Game Bread Fire. Who's that guy's name? The Game Bread. Are you talking about that it's the fly Masvidal? Yeah, the flying mm -hmm. knee. And that yep. basically ended his MMA career, which I was like, oh, smart dude. He got knocked out like cold, but he's into crypto. And that's really how I know him. He's with this Litecoin guy and he's into the Bitcoin and all this stuff. Comes back into the forefront by fighting Logan, uh, Jake Paul. And man, he got some, I don't know exactly how much. I've heard different things like a million. I've heard 500 grand. I've heard a bunch of different things that he got the bag. And, you know, a lot of people thought he'd give Jake a problem because he had the fighting background. Granted, it's wrestling. Man, this guy looked like Eddie. If you put, you know, and I love you, Eddie, and, and let's just call it what it is. You and him had the same physique going into this fight. <laughs> I mean, this man did not turn down a donut. But the odds were still not crazy. So it's like Vegas usually knows. And then if you watch that fight, did you watch it? Yeah, yeah. I watched the whole thing, which was a spectacle in its own right. This guy, I mean, Ben, it, he looked like he was in a different world. Like, he didn't even, I mean, he just came at him like Humpty Dumpty, hump, hand down like it. And I'm excited to talk to him. I don't know they did a day, a day of training. I don't know they trained for five seconds. Like, that. I said, I tweeted, this was a lack of effort and preparation for fight that I think is historic levels. Jose Canseco, but even for me, I think Jose maybe trained more than, because I saw Jose hit a heavy bag or a weight bag once, that may have beaten Ben. Uh, and Bitcoin, by the way, has, has gone down. Now, Bitcoin's way up still overall, obviously, but it's tanked. It's almost like the second Ben Askren got punched in the face, like, oh, he's a fraud. I don't know if that hit hit Bitcoin, but we'll get him on the show. I like him. I think he's smart. I think he's funny. I, and then there's the picture of him, like, kind of smiling. I'm just curious. Did he just do the greatest work of all time, and he knew it? Yeah, he somehow, it was a bigger work than Conseco somehow. I, I, I don't know. He, I don't know. Did, when happened. I saw him at the weigh-in, how can you be that out of shape? He just didn't, he just took the money and ran. And by the way, I but think it's... I think he's really There's bad. There's not a shape people that could fight, though. You know that. Like, D.C., Dalen Cormier is not the best-looking guy, but yeah, he's but, one of the baddest dudes in the world. Yeah, but they don't look like him there. It's like a bigger guy. Sometimes you have that. And, like, when he's fighting MMA, he was in better shape, I think. I don't know. We're curious to find out um, whether he knew that. He's just, I'm going to go in. I'm going to take a punch in the face. And people like he took a dive. He didn't. He got fucking smoked. But I'm very curious. Before he comes on, though, we do kind of got to address you just got, like, three chicks tanning in your backyard. Are they in the shot? Are they, I could say they could see. <laughs> yeah, they've been, I've been waiting to cut you off. They're over your left shoulder, right shoulder. We got asses. Yeah, we got so legs all over doing, the um, <laughs> We do BFFs beforehand, 
And that's, so this Lana Rhodes, you may be familiar with some of her work, maybe not, I don't know. And our friends who she does the podcast, they're in town, they're flying back today. So we finished ours and they're just chilling until they go back to the airport. Oh, here you go. How'd it go? The pod? Yeah. Good. Is it now? Is this your first time meeting Lana? Yeah. No, 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 no. I met her um, when I did Impulsive. But I didn't okay. know who she was at that point. Like, I, she, she was dating a guy, Mike, who was on the show. And so she, mm-hmm. like, watched the show. But, and she's done a bunch gotcha. with us. Gotcha. It looks like a good tanning backyard. How's the... Uh, it How's is. the cookie brown coming so far? I look, I look great, but I'm out of shape too. Like we did a promo shoot for uh, BFFs, and like so, it's supposed to be funny. It was Josh's idea. I had my shirt off, and I'm asking Kareem, I'm like, do I look fat? I don't want to pose. He's like, yeah. It's like, what if I sit like this? He's like, ah, it's still fat. What about this? Still fat. I'm, I'm just out of shape. So maybe not Ben Askren out of shape, but I'm out of shape. <laughs> I was gonna say you came at Askren pretty hard for well, someone who I'm not has in their a own fight. problems right now. I'm not in a fight. So he's, he's in the waiting room. Oh, let's get him on. He's in the waiting room. Yo. Can you, can you hear us? I can hear you. All right. I'm so fascinated. I watched the fight and I saw the thing you think I don't like. I like you. I think you're very funny and smart and I love the Bitcoin angle. <laughs> the fight, I had no idea what to expect because there's a whole MMA and you don't know with, um, you know, Jake Paul, what's going on. And then I saw you at the weigh-in and I'm like, I don't, I don't think this dude has been in the gym for the past six months. And then you watch the fight. I tweeted, I think it was the most unprepared or, or taking something less seriously fight I've ever seen. And we had a Jose Canseco who took a dive at one of our events in six seconds. So I need to know, did you care at all? Like even a tiny little bit, or are you like, I'm gonna get money and I go buy it. You may have caused a dip in Bitcoin. That's one of my theories because when the punch landed, Bitcoin went down. No, it was an hour before. (laughs) <laughs> well, maybe somebody saw the pictures of you in the locker room and they're like, sell. So what, what did you, do you train at all? All right. Fair question, Dave. And I saw your tweet. So I assumed it was coming. Um, all right. I took, I took the fight 11 weeks before the fight happened. Right. I, that happened. The con got contracted. So obviously I retired from the UFC in October of 2019. Um, and then I had my hip surgery in September of 2020. So literally, really up until I started training for the fight, I had no ability to do anything. I was off um, and I had not trained for 16 months. So I was my fattest I've ever been in my entire life. And that that's coming from a guy who has never been known for having a good physique. So for 11 weeks, I trained very hard. I did not miss any days of t- planned training. Um, maybe at maximum one day a week I took off, but some days I didn't really take any days off. Uh, and listen, I prepared as well as I could. I mean, I just don't look good. And then (laughs) if you want to top that onto the fact that the fight was at 192 pounds, I fought at 170. I wrestled in the Olympics at 163 pounds. So if you add 27 or, or 20 pounds to someone, they generally don't look all that great. And that's onto a guy who didn't look that great in the first place. All right. Fair. That, that can make sense. So it, part of it, and I'm fascinated by the whole thing. I was fascinated. Like, it, I don't know if you paid attention to the odds. You weren't that big of an underdog. It was, and to me, that was almost alarming in a way. It's like, oh, people who know what they're doing think you're going to put up a fight. And I know you have the fight history. And I just don't know what to make of Jake Paul yet coming out of the fight. You're, you're never a striker. I know that. Like, uh, that's like not your MA. Do you give him, and you've probably said it other places, what do you think of him now as a fighter? Is anything um, changed? It looked like you weren't aware he was going to throw a punch, which was surprising no, to me. Uh, no, so it's, it's a, yeah. Okay, so obviously he had a good overhand right. We knew that. Um, and it was something we talked about. But I have instincts for MMA. For, right, that's what I did. I did MMA for a decade. I did boxing for 11 weeks. So it, it's, hard, it's really hard to break um, – old habits. And one of the things in MMA, I wanted people to throw an overhand right at me because it was generally the easiest punch to get a takedown off of, which is what I wanted to do. Um, which also means my guard was generally open on that side because I wanted people to throw the punch. Um, my, every coach I talked to said repeatedly guard has to be tighter. And it was, it was something I worked on, but again, I have habits from something for 10 years. Um, and then it's hard to change in 11 weeks. And I, honestly, I think I got, I, I know I got so much better in 11 weeks and I, you know, going into, we knew Jake Paul had decent power. Um, 
I thought I could stay safe for the first round or two. He would wear out, and then I, and then I'd rough him up after that a little bit. Uh, I never ever claimed to be a good boxer. And then you know, I know you guys also posted a video of me and my wife after the fight. And I don't know if people were paying attention, but I said I said this many times after Saturday night. Monday, I'll be back podcasting and coaching wrestling because that's what I enjoy doing in my life. And so, no, the result of the bout will, will not change my life in one way, shape, or form. And the funny thing my wife said to me, and she could kind of say it right now, she sometimes she says, Ben, what is your life? Because it's like, you know, I'm, I, just, I like coaching wrestling and hanging around the house with my kids. And I sometimes I get these really insane opportunities. Like I'm talking to fucking Dave Portnoy. You know, I was boxing in a fucking ring with a robot and then Snoop Dogg and Mario Lopez and then Bieber singing over there. It's like, what? what is your life? Yeah, and, and I don't begrudge any of it. Like, I, I thought it was a pretty good choice. And we've had Jake on. And, and how much do you make uh, officially on this? How much? Uh, my base pay was uh, half a million dollars. And then it goes up because you got a, a piece of the cut, right? Uh, I, made, I made some more money after that. Well, you're being like vague. Are you not allowed to say it? Uh, I just, I mean, man, I, I told you my base pay was half a million dollars. I, I, I made a good living. I, I'm fairly well off, but not well off enough where, you know, let's say, let's say a million, a million dollars doesn't change my life. It does in some instances. I mean, I'm going to buy a bunch of Bitcoin. The dip was nice because I bought it. Yeah, the dip was, like, yeah, yeah, trust me. I'm paying it to, I, I, I check it every 10 seconds. That I, I had a nice gif of your face with the bit. So I, again, I, I get it. Yeah, and I think you're so. logical. What is going in and out? Is that our fault? The whatever he's back right now, but it was blinking. Um, the, the, it, like I would do it. And I thought you're a great choice because I I've heard you talk and promo and the way you handled the, the getting the knee with Masvidal. I've seen all that and you're smart and funny and can promo yourself. And I think from Jake's side, I would continue to pick people like you who can bring a degree of credibility, but maybe not that actual credible because he's not, you know, he's making a ton of money and every yeah. time he does these knockouts, it sets it up. So where do you sit now on him? Did you change anything? You're like, yeah, well, it's not that surprising. I, I'm not, I'm not like a boxer. So he hit me in the face. And obviously I saw that everyone's saying you took a dive. It's like, if you watch the video, you clearly didn't take a dive. You got smoked. Yeah. So that's not part of it, but where do you sit on him? Uh, I'm more indifferent. I, I just don't care. I didn't care about Jake Paul. When I took the fight. No, I meant like skill wise. Did anything? Are you like, oh, he's more impressive than I thought? No, we uh, we knew he had a good right hand. I wish I could have fucking not got knocked out and got him into the fight and see how he can really fight. And I, and I didn't really do that. Sorry, sorry. I said sorry, world. Um, and it's kind of funny because I I think the world was more compelled to watch Jake Paul lose than I was. I don't really give a shit about him. Um, I probably won't follow him after this. I didn't follow him before it. Um. And it, it was really funny. I, I kept bringing up to my wife that more people cared about this, this contest than anything else I've done in my whole life. And yet for me, it was kind of at the bottom of the barrel. I mean, I grew up wrestling and I wanted to be good so bad, like worse than anything. I mean, I, I went like 10 years without taking a vacation because my parents kept trying to take me on vacation. I said, no, I need to train. And I would literally make them leave and they, they would leave me at home alone because I wanted to train for wrestling. And so it's like, I cared about that stuff so much. And then it's like, Hey, this guy wants to box. You pay me How'd they money. land on you? How what? did they land on you? How did they fight? Like, how, how did you get brought into this? Uh, he said my name when he fought Nate Robinson. And then I, you know, I kind of said, Hey, yeah, whatever. I'll fight him. And you know, there was a few other people, I guess. And I think I had a, I had a fairly large, a large audience. They knew I wasn't a great striker. That's probably played into it. Um, and really the only net reason I wouldn't have done it. And this, then this isn't even a reason to me, which is why I did, but the reason a lot of people is like, there was the ability for me to be embarrassed. And that was what happened. But I just don't, I just don't give a shit. I'm going to go coach wrestling. I'm going to do my podcast. I understood the risk when I was going into it. And I'm just not a coward. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So th that is a question. And, and, and that's part of it. And I don't, I probably wouldn't feel any differently in your shoes, but mm -hmm. And, and I don't want to say embarrassed, but your last two moments now are like, you're, you're like a poster yeah. board. You're, you know, the two yeah. fantastic knockouts that you've been on the wrong side, but no, you don't care at all. No, not a little bit now that you have this tremendous wrestling career. Yeah. But when people think your name now, they're going to think of those two things that doesn't bother you as an athlete at all. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit autistic. Uh, my wife thinks I have Asperger's, so that's probably why it doesn't really bother me. But no, I, I just, I really couldn't care less. I mean, 
just go on about my life. I mean, it was funny because I was out playing. I had some high school friends over last night. We grilled some burgers and played some disc golf. And it's like, that was weird. Like a million, millions of people were watching me last night. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it just, it's again, like when my wife says, what is your life? It's like, sometimes you get put in these situations and it's like, what in the hell is going on? What about your Bitcoin people? And I know them all. Like I saw a parabolic guy. Parabolic was there. It. I know. So what did he say to you? Like, way to get your faith. Like, what, what, what was that? I mean, he likes to brag and gloat. And he's yeah. got probably the Ferrari shades and trying to peel out. And then there is an element. You let this crew that, you know, everyone, I give Jake all the credit. He's a great mastermind, but you know, they're just partying. So what did, what did your Bitcoin people say about it? Um, but, what did you he know, say? I, what parabolic guy say to you uh, after the fight? My phone, my phone's charging. I can't see what, uh, how I pulled through. He just said, says that something nice. He actually came over. Uh, I wanted to debate him on Saturday about, you know, what I'm going to do with my money afterwards because I own some wrestling academy. So is it like, should I buy some more bill? I own two buildings. Should I buy a couple more buildings? Should I put it all the Bitcoin? And so we, we had a good hour long uh discussion and he's feet so freaking smart uh it's fantastic um he said ben safe travels enjoy meeting your wife and assistant fuck jake paul that was <laughs> like jake paul all right bitcoin real quick while i got you and i know you get deadline it's at what fifty six thousand. Got- Do- yeah that's what's at right correct dogecoin is 39 cents is that what i saw oh not goddamn dogecoin <laughs> you gotta talk about dogecoin you got to talk hate about it. Dogecoin. I hate it. Because but now do you hate it because you think it clowns on people are talking about this and it, it I mean, it's people are making all this money and it, I said this, I think it embarrasses the, the Bitcoin people because every, all these magic coins are getting lumped yeah. together. Is that why you don't like it? Uh, I, I don't like it. Cause I think it distract, it's a distraction. Um, I, I, it's like this funny little dog meme and everyone wants to post about it and talk about it rather than talking about the real innovation of what Bitcoin brings us and the freedom and the decentralization and all those like really important things that if you want to think deeply about your life and the problem is a lot of people don't want to think deeply about their lives. Uh, it kind of distracts from that, right? It's this cute little dog and, and the money goes up and people love it. And they don't want to talk about the really, really important things like the central bank can just print as much money as they want and inflate our money to zero if they want to. How, how long have you been in Bitcoin for? Tw- uh, 2017, I got in. Who, like how, who told you? Like, wh- how'd you get involved? Uh, I had a really good friend, Rye Stone. He was a college wrestling teammate. He lives in Australia now and, um, he, I was actually at my fight. I fought in Shanghai in uh, September. I think it was September 1. So it was in August sometime of 2017. And he said, hey, I got to tell you about this thing, Bitcoin. And he started talking and I'm like, oh, that's freaking, that's it. I, I need some of that. And then I, can, I couldn't buy enough fast enough. And then obviously we went up and then we went down. And I, I generally see it as the future of the world. I think it's the best money ever created. Um, and that's why, you know, again, when, when we get distracted by Dogecoin, because it's a cute dog and it's fun to talk about, I, I just think that really distracts from people thinking deeply about what the real value is. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going to land. I, it's well documented. I think I'm one of the more talked about like Bitcoin, but not Bitcoin people. I, I bought it at 11. I sold it. The Winklevellies, the Winklevosses told me <laughs> it's because uh, Elon's going to go musk, uh, mine gold. I'm like, yes, this makes no fucking bizarre. sense. I'm out. And then it it almost like two weeks later went bananas and it's gone bananas since. So I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't Bitcoin. know why they got distracted by the gold on the meteors or something like that. I would that you buy totally- it hearing that? If someone told you that's what it is, would you buy it? So I, I get what, so I understand what they're saying. Here's what they're saying. They're saying sound money principles means there's only a finite amount of it. You can only have so many. There's only 21 million Bitcoin. The Federal Reserve can print as many dollars as they want. Um, and in ancient times, for example, certain cultures had money. And because there was only a finite amount of it, it was worth something. But then if someone created a better mode of transportation, they found some a couple hundred miles away, they brought it in, it essentially all went to zero. I think that's what they were trying to say. But it just seemed to distract from the point. Yeah. And I'm still convinced the people who have money won't necessarily just like let this new transfer of wealth happen. There is a, I think, I think it's become accepted. So I'm surprised. I don't think it's going anywhere, Mm -hmm. but there is, I still, it's pump, 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 pump. And then you don't know who's dumping. Maybe one day I'll get in on it. 
But I don't know when that is. I want it to keep going. I need you to fight a couple more times I'm and then done. a couple more dips. I said I would never fight again. I mean, before Bullshit, before someone, the fight, I said I would never fight again. Um, and I, I guess I'm repeating that. That's, that's not what yeah, I'm well, you. I don't think you're going to be in high demand after that performance. But if you, uh, you I want sold a million and a half pay-per-views, I'm sure someone's going to pay me. Well, if I wanted to. I mean, after you get knocked out, your value, I think goes down that's how that works that's Dave, like the big that's not, i mean come on man you, you paid jose canseco a million dollars he has yeah no but value. we're not paying him again <laughs> his value his yeah value but that's because he down. actually cheated because he cheated his value he didn't cheat he got overwhelmed in a different way what do you mean like what was gonna i think he thought what was about to what happened to you was about to happen with him so he stayed down um oh, really you, you got knocked out fair and square but I mean, but the value I, goes down. You, I, I don't begrudge you for doing that at all. If someone said, here's a million dollars to get punched in the face, I'd probably do it too. But everyone knows I can't fight. You have the background. So I, I have no problem. I just was stunned when I saw you in the ring and you're saying yeah. you're just out of shape and did train. I, I, was, I mean, I'm, in, I'm actually in really good shape. And so again, I kind of just look funny. I've kind of just had this shit physique my entire life. But my biggest weapon in college wrestling and then continuing MMA was actually my gas tank. And so despite the fact that I didn't really look that good. I could just go forever. And, you know, honestly, I, feel, I, I did that 12 minute pad session, an open workout. It's like, I, I, I feel like I could just work out forever or do as many rounds as I, I needed to, despite the fact that I don't look that good. And actually, my college coaches joked that my love handles, they were my gas tanks. Well, you definitely had them in full effect. So good. It, for you. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> did Dana text you, Ben, afterwards? Dana did. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm sure we're back to, um, just on a non-speaking basis. I don't know. I don't want to say anything negative. Like, um, you know, I got traded to the UFC. So I was retired. So Dave, if you don't know, I was, I was retired. I had a, uh, relatively well-known spat with Dana white in my first contract negotiation. Um, I never got the opportunity to fight in the UFC. And so eventually I retired in 2017. And then I got unretired by being traded to the UFC and the only trade ever executed in mixed martial arts. Um, and then, you know, but even then Dana still didn't really talk to me. And the first time he ever talked to me was about this Jake Paul fight. And so I'm sure we're, uh, they're lost him a million dollars. I'm sure we're kind of back to not talking. <laughs> yeah. He, he, uh, he, he bet, right? Like yeah, Jake. Yes. Admit, yeah. That I tried to see what he'd say to that. And again, there is an element and obviously by talking to you, you don't care at all, but MMA people are nuts and they're like, you shouldn't have done that. You embarrass MMA people because now they're like taking that as, you know, MMAs, they can't box, they can't fight, a YouTuber. There's a lot of that that I saw online that you disgraced MMA. Yeah, I, I told them I don't give a shit about them. I told them I wasn't representing them. I was representing myself. That that was it. And I mean, if we want to go to a further extent, yeah, I, listened, I didn't focus on my striking for a decade. I, and, and people want to... It's funny because people want to look back at my career and say, well, you should have done this or that different. I, I was also undefeated for a decade and a, and a two, uh, two promotion world champion uh, for, for a decade. And then I, reti I retired undefeated happily um, and I decided to come back. And then, you know, if you I, I hate making excuses, Dave, so I, I, I almost don't even want to bring this up. But it's like my hip was so bad that I, I mean, by the time I unretired to go to the UFC, I was severely limited in what I could and couldn't do. Um, and so, you know, people want to say, well, he didn't do well in UFC, but I was already retired once. What, what, here's a question for you. And this is more, I think I've another, another, you know, gif or video that I've mm -hmm. seen. And I don't think I know my opinion on it. There's a video of you out there and some guys on top of you smashing your face. Yeah. And they're basically like, Ben survived this. Like, there's no way he didn't take a dive or even train because yeah, how could you so. survive this in MMA but not survive this? For people who are wondering at home, I what what is your answer to that? Uh, I mean, if if you're fighting, it's it's very expressly where you get punched that puts you down. So um, I believe from what I saw, he hit me like right behind the ear, which is that kind of knocks off your equal equilibrium. And and all in all fairness, I thought I got up in time for the count. I told the ref I'm ready to fight. Um, he said I didn't. I I disagree with that, but I wasn't gonna throw a fit and cry about the referee because I tell my kids don't do that shit. Um, and the day I knew I was, you know, it's, it's kind of like if you go wrestle in the opponent's gym and then the, the kid gets pinned and they're like, but I wasn't I'm, I wasn't flat. It's like, yeah, but you're in the opponent's gym. What do you think's gonna happen, bro? And so yeah. I didn't I didn't want to cry and throw a fit. 
Um, but yeah, if you get you know, get here, you get here, you get hit behind the ear. Those are certain spots that knock you out. Robbie hit me very, very hard, um, and just not in the right spot to put me out. So, so where is, I'll let you go with this question, unless yeah. Eddie has more. I, this is just more curious. So you fought Jake Paul. Where would his power in terms of you being hit rank in your like career being hit in the face with punches? Uh, well, he didn't hit me in the face. It was kind of like I said behind the ear. Um, uh, it's one of those things. I don't. Know, you've never been. You've never really been hit, Dave. So it's hard to. Like I, I didn't really feel it. <laughs> I didn't God. feel pain at the time. I didn't feel pain afterwards. It just like in a spot where it hit me and I went down and then I like I said I got up and then the ref said I wasn't in time. Uh, but there wasn't like a specific amount of pain uh, tied to that. I wouldn't say. So all right. So but there is another events like. I mean, power is something everyone talks about in combat sports. He's got power. He doesn't. Yeah. If, if, if you were a commentator, we'd be like, oh, Jake Paul has power. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that's a, that's a fair thing to say um, where he ranks him amongst other people. I, I don't want to like, maybe I sound arrogant here, but I didn't really get hit a lot. I mean, the Robbie fight, but before that, I was really efficient in what I did and getting takedowns in. I mean, I probably took in, in the 18 fights prior to my first retirement, I probably took two or three hard strikes to the head and that's about it. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I'm, uh, I'm sure we'll cross paths. Let me get one. Let me get one. I, th I thought of you a Bitcoiner now, but <laughs> what, <Eddie? laughs> I got one more. Did, did, did La Jolla, did you see him at all? What was, what was that guy doing? Um, I did not see him. Uh, I heard him, right. I was hearing the broadcast. He was very clearly um, on some type of substance. I, who knows, right? What it was. It, it wasn't just pot. Pot doesn't make you do do speak like that. So I don't know if it's pot and alcohol or or other stuff. You know, and I actually didn't love how the, the show was kind of like it was really glorifying marijuana. And I listen, I don't I don't care. You can smoke pot if you want, if you're an adult, but to a show that probably a lot of kids were watching, I was like, ooh, I was cringing because I knew a lot of the athletes that I coach are watching it and they were just like such a high glorification of that that type of thing and that type of behavior. I didn't. I didn't watch much, but I was more insulted. I wasn't asked to like announce or something. Like I, I, like this is. You, I have you every world right that in. I could be. Yeah, every world that I'm part of. Your world, Bitcoin world, YouTube world, like, and I announce boxing. Whatever, insulting. I'll let it slide. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. I guess we won't see a fight again, but we'll. No. I'll follow Bitcoin, and if I got questions, I'll let you know. Uh, hopefully I can keep it simpler than the Winklevoss I did. And uh, it's really unfortunate. I appreciate all of your things you do. So it's unfortunate. These were the circumstances that we had to cross paths under, but that's the way the world works sometimes. Yeah. What's well, your no, podcast, I mean, like said, son? Uh, what'd you say? What's your podcast? You should get all that out there too. Yeah. So I, I invited Dave on the funky crypto podcast. He he declined, which eh, that's fair. <laughs> do you do it, me directly? Uh, I mean, I, I don't believe I can message you on D, uh, but I just, you know, I said at your hand. Oh, yeah. It, well, you you do it with the Kim guy, right? John Kim, yeah. The, the the sleepy point. eyes. Or whatever yeah, like point. Them. Very funny. Makes good videos. All the yes. Bitcoin the guys do. I never like that's why I, I, I've been. I, I know it will. I think you're a funny guy, smart guy. Yeah. And then I do I do a wrestling podcast for full wrestling, which is the biggest site in wrestling on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning. All right, there he is, Ben Askren, world champ, king of getting knocked out, too. Ah, ouch. <laughs> I mean, it's a bad... <laughs> if you ever start that, paper hands, Portnoy, it was great meeting you. Have a great day. All right, take it easy. Peace. See ya. It is interesting. All right, that was Ben Askren. When you have a career like that, and he's a world-class wrestler, but those two moments are indelible. It's surprising. He is right. He's had a he's had a very interesting career. Like he was like the guy. He was like Sting. Like never went to WWE. So he, he always wanted to see it. And then when he came, he was probably a little past his prime, a little injured, like he said, and just kind of did not uh, go away. Well. I mean, he does get knocked out in fantastic fashion. He's like, uh, who's the guy? Stan Humphreys concussion face. You know <laughs> yeah, what? Stan Humphreys yeah. get concussion uh, like knocked out. All right, <laughs> rollback. Want to do rollback? Yeah, well, it's a rowback. I got the sweatshirt on right here. Love it. Love that logo. Rowback, pronounced rowback, like you're rowing back. Uh, they've come on in a big way. Eddie, it's your code. Eddie, you're wearing it. Eddie, rowback.com. 20% off through the end of this week. That's a sharp little hoodie you got on, too. That's spelled R H O B A C K.com. 20% off polos, Q zips, quarter zips, hoodies, tees with Eddie. Go check them out at rowback.com. R H O B A C K.com. The dog logo is very cool. 
And they got that little strike very comfortable thing in the back. Too. What? Very comfortable. Very yep. rollbacks, very comfortable. For sure. Uh, so, yeah, go check out some rollback. Uh, all right, Dave, your world. I have to say, I, after we signed off, I did not see Mrs. Portnoy stealing the show from Mike Portnoy Esquire. She – she was she was the main character last week. Yeah, she was a bunch uh, walking around the back and, and you know just saying. I mean, parents is old, like you know that you can see the background. So any boat that goes by, she's like they're smuggling drugs in that. Um, she told Star me not burst. to have pool parties because someone was going to get drunk and fall in and drown. Just very you know parental things. And then the starburst. That vicious move. You gave me just yellow and oranges, vicious. Thought nothing of it either. No, and I caught her off guard. It's like, I don't mean to put my parents on content, but I know it's funny. It's like, they're so outrageous, the two of them. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're having a wonderful time here. Dave is counting the minutes and hours. That's not going. true. <laughs> By pen, she's got the pen hat on. Yeah, it's up. let's go pen. There you go. That should move the stock a little bit. Was, now, does, that, does, does your dad get a little jealous when he's not in the content? Because he so. likes the content, right? Yeah, I mean, my dad and I did get into a little dispute. Um, <laughs> we were talking about, you know, Parcel Radio Channel. He's talking about the Cousins, obviously, and it being canceled. Uh, and, well, the whole station, not just them. I'm like, and I don't know how we went down, but he essentially said the reason it wasn't more successful, and this is what everyone says that I hate, is we didn't promote the show enough. Had nothing to do with them or the show. It's like, you guys didn't promote. It's like, Dad, first of all, um, your son, so I, I'm obviously fairly well known. So that's a built in advantage. You have 70,000 Twitter followers based on that. You're on a nationally syndicated satellite like radio station that you have your own show. Like, what more do you want for promo? And we were going back and forth. He just wouldn't accept it. He thinks the only reason that wasn't like the next Stern is because we didn't promote it. And didn't he say it's because Balls was a social media guy too? Yeah, like he's like I, he's like no one does this. That. I'm like, why don't you get an intern? He's like, I didn't know I was allowed to do that. I think he had one at one point, but I, we were getting frustrated, so I just kind of dropped it because it's like it's funny at Barstool. Every single person who doesn't think they're successful enough blames it on not enough promotion, and all the successful people never complain about promotion. That's true, but he was actually like getting a little little worked up about yeah, it. Oh yeah. Really? Yep. Wow. And is he? Uh, he he also hit me up. He said, loves doing the show. With a photo he lo- there. <laughs> She's like, there we go. I'm sure, nobody <laughs> minds. <laughs> um, he he also said that he would like to make monthly appearances on this show. He's said, more than yes. welcome. The more the merrier. Yeah. Good. Okay. I'm I mean, he's always okay. interesting, cat. Always, always. Then, the New York Post kind of blew up your spot right i don't know why how they find that information out or what they're doing and i don't know why they say it, it, it's an ad for the house something going on behind me i don't know it's an ad no, for the good. house the new york post just was trying this house is for sale and they're just using me to basically somehow get free ads it's ridiculous but now people show up at the house it sucks is that accurate what you're paying it's fairly accurate close yes it's a lot of fucking money. It's a ton of money. It, it, How it, long are you it, doing that for? What? No, it's just uh, one like, month. But I want what the problem oh. is Miami because of COVID, like 10x what people are used to paying. 10x. There were no nothing available. I don't like staying in hotels. I can't do it anymore. Can't relax. So yeah, I splurged. Shoot me. So if you're kind of out of the loop, Dave didn't want to say what celebrity's house he's staying in. New York Post wrote an article like 48 hours later. It's Floyd Mayweather's house. We could say that, right? It's, yeah. It's out there now, right? Yeah. It's out. Yeah. There's like little TMT logos on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Is there like uh, speed bags and shit? No, it's just his little logo on like the security. But yeah, I didn't want to say it because people show up. I show up, there's a guy in a suit who wants an interview. People dropping pizzas off. Just, I got a mask in the mail that, you know, like a Corona mask that is like a a ball gag thing. It's like, I'm just trying to relax. Yeah, you don't want that. Yeah, who wants that? We only got like a couple couple weeks left, right? Yeah, I'm almost gone. Do you like it a lot though? Like, would you? Are you kind of? Do you wish this was your place? Being able to be relaxed, you know, there's no people yeah. around. I can just sit out and do work and chill. So yes, it's a big difference. But are you gonna like it more than the place that you already bought? Oh, I gotta do work on that place. I gotta so. 
don't well, know. You told us about the water thing. How did that get resolved or no? What water thing? You said it was taking water. You weren't sure if it oh, was because. Mold. No, I, yes, yeah, mold. I have the place. It is what it is. I can't bad. Now, that's another thing. My mom was here. She kept saying, like, this place is nice. You should get this. I'm like, I already closed on the other place. She's like, well, you can get out of it. It's like, no, you can't. No, you can't get out of a house once you bought it. They have the money. It's gone. It's done. She's like, well, this one, why don't you try to get this one? It's like, you're just depressing me. So, and then that's a couple months away, probably? Uh, yeah. It, I, I'm After April, I won't be back in Miami till October or something. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Because I'll, uh, I'll be in the New York area. Like, weather starts getting okay. nicer. So you're going back. Okay, yep. interesting. Uh, you went to Grutman's thing. He opened a hotel, I believe. How yeah. was that? Star-studded affair. I, Eddie, I, I've said this, it, and I didn't know how to tweet it because I didn't want to seem like brag. I don't know. I, people, a question I get, who would you be starstruck by? And I'd never really have anybody off the top of my mind. I was very close to Chris Rock, and I was starstruck. Chris Rock mm. is a genius, top, 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 funniest people in my mind. Um, I bought one ticket for a comedy show in my life. It was Chris Rock. I didn't even have the balls to go up and ask for a picture. I wanted it so bad. You didn't say what's up? No. Really? I was just like scared. And then didn't even like nudge Grutman, be like, hey, could you? No, he was running around. Run? And credit to yeah. him, awesome hotel, great job. Uh, like Sean Penn was in our area, Beckham, uh, Chris Rock. It was really something. Could we try to get Chris Rock on the show? He doesn't know who I am. Yeah. I'd love to well, talk to him. I, he, do, are you a fan? Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like a, a out of this world fan, but of course, who doesn't like Chris genius. Rock? In my mind, he's a yeah. genius. Very good. Maybe Very him good. and he's Ricky Gervais. Of... Him and Ricky Gervais. They're both they're both up yeah, there for you. He's just line. a very like he's got a good perspective on shit, and I appreciate that about Chris Rock. Very good perspective. You also had a guest there. You also reposted a photo. I know before you said you don't got a girlfriend, but are you sure you don't got a girlfriend? <laughs> Silvana. Yeah. Yeah, we hang out a lot, and we're, like, figuring it out. Um, we're definitely like figuring it out, but we spent a lot of time together, for sure. Wow. We're figuring it out. Yeah, we're figuring it out. No, we're not boyfriend-girlfriend. Okay. But we're figuring it out. We're figuring it out, because you go to a point, right. it's like, all right, well, now what? It's like, yeah. Like, if, right. you're, if I'm out, would you want to see her, like, with another dude? No. Would she want to see me with another girl? No. But we're not dating. So we're seeing what's up. Is she we're gonna, figuring uh, it out? Is she going to go to wherever you're going? No. In the next so that's why it's so? like no. probably unrealistic, right? Because she lives in Miami Tough, and yeah. I don't. Tough. All right. Well, we'll see if you figure it out. We're figuring it out. <laughs> Hashtag figuring uh, it out. <laughs> Hashtag figuring it out. Uh, you you were on the dozen. We we kind of teased it last episode. What, yeah, how was what happened with that? Yeah, I, I made a glorious offer. To be on your team if you want for the vote, I, crickets. Did anyone reply to that? Well, we got to we got to stir up the drama. The tournament's happening first week of May. You know, may, maybe me and Clem like do a, a sit down selection show. We, because I mean, we're Rico Bosco left you uh, dangling in the breeze. He did. Miko he, he, he certainly did. You let you let a Miko get away with that type of behavior. You're you know, it's enabling like a little petulant child. So you would actually come to the tournament in May. If what do you mean come it. to it? It's going to be in studio. Like everyone's flying there. It's got sponsors. Like all, all the Chicago guys are flying how, out. How long it's is going the to tournament? Be, it's two days. It's two days. Uh, like first uh, early May. I like have like to a see Tuesday, the date. That is an X factor that I didn't know was the case. But assuming I could do it, yeah. All right. Then I guess. Okay. I didn't know if it was supposed to be set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could probably do that, yes. All right. I guess Clem and I have a decision to make, Yeah, you right? do. Although it's taken so long, uh, like, that may get yanked back at some point. No, you can't do that. Like I said, we it's we it's gotta like be a little Miko Bosco, it. and you're still this guy. This guy left you on the battlefield with no weapons, taking heavy fire. He said, though, he would face people not in his contract to hang banners. So, <laughs> um, moving on, uh, two wired.com employees announced that they were stepping down. 
Is one of them the monster, the green monster? I... Yeah, I saw that. Green Monster, I made a couple of videos. Again, I always clarify, it's her nickname, not because of physical, it's a play on her last name. I think she's, um, her personality is monstrous. And then I combine that with green and you get Green Monster. And yeah, she uh, stepped down because she was burned out. She thought she was working too hard. Shame, shame, shame to work too hard. I did 10 years, didn't take a day off, no vacation. 24 hours in a day, I was working 30 of them, paper route, so I could build something. The monster then will tell me how I have to treat my employees or whatever. She was burned out. There's some people who say uh, the definition of white privilege would be a girl who's been given every opportunity in life, just quitting a job, and then because she knows she can get a new one whenever she wants, you know, is that white privilege? Like, would minorities have that ability to be like, I just quit because I'm burned out. I don't like working. And then no, someone will hire. I don't know. I think not. I think not. Uh, but I don't have much to say on this issue. I Take the high road. Said David all you, needed high road. To say. you just said all you needed to say. Let's uh, talk about Felix Gray and then let's do some explain that picture, Dave. There they are. You got the Roblings. Love them. See the case right Need there. Them. They help me when I'm looking at the screen very much so. Um, I wear them all the time, off camera, on camera, every which way. 15x more the blue light. It filters. Uh, Dave wears the original optical lens and the Roebling. That's what I'm wearing. We got a selection of styles. Blue light lenses, standard starting at 95 bucks. Add prescription at 145. And you can really feel it. It makes a huge difference. And uh, exclusively for schoolies, we're kicking off the Felix Gray birthday sale. 15% off side, uh, the site-wide store when you visit FelixGray.com slash Portnoy. FelixGray.com slash Portnoy. Enter promo code Portnoy at checkout. It's live until May 2nd. Free shipping, free exchanges, 30-day back money, 30-day guarantee money back. FelixGray.com slash Portnoy. Promo code Portnoy. I like these so much. It's not only for the for I wear them for the blue light, but they do look good enough where I'd wear them for style. Yeah, they're good stuff. I mean, you wear them all the fucking I time. I do because without like them, my eyes hurt and I can't sleep. They twitch. If that's not an endorsement, I don't know what it is. It's so. a real endorsement. Go get some Felix Gray, G R A Y. Um, all right, explain that picture, Michelangelo, Kareem. Can someone pull that up? I'm in that same boat right now. I got a pinched nerve in my neck a little bit. So I had an injured neck. We were catching punts and I needed that. Like I literally needed that neck brace to live. And um, we did it when Zoltan Mesco, and I didn't do great in the, pat, in the punt competition because I had a, a broken neck. I was a walking spinal cord injury, I think is what I said. I'm, I'm a walking paralyzed man. <laughs> Thank you, Zoltan. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and then the shirt is from the Gerbil Show. <laughs> oh, yeah. It yeah, is. the Gerbil Show shirt. That was almost like the first time there was a uh, – like like you were not, – not the first time, I shouldn't say, but you were really licking your chops to get – that was like a – that was a WWE-esque kind of bit right there. It's not a bit, Eddie. My neck it's was fucked. a bad fucked. neck. My neck was fucked. Are you serious? Yeah. Your neck was actually hurting. Yes. I don't do things with camera. No, brick by brick, not I'm, stick by stick. I'm getting pulled into this, but I know you were kidding. Uh, but you regardless, mean? you were. What do you mean I was kidding? No, I was not. You did not get hurt at this old tan Mesco thing. I went in hurt. Yo, what about having a neck injury during this? I'm like, I have a, almost should be in a neck brace at this point. I went in hurt. I, my neck was fucked up. How did, how did it happen? I, I don't know. It was like I had a broken neck. Slept wrong? I, I, I can't believe you're questioning my integrity. The, you think I just threw that on? I had a broken neck. No, you're the ex Davy excuse train was a thing back then. But the neck was a thing. I had the hunch. It, I have it right now. I'm injured right now. I'm playing hurt right now. What happened now? I slept just bad. It's a bad, bad pillow. You don't like when the pillows are too stacked too high, high, right? Too high, the whole works. Yeah? Nothing. Getting can't have old. anything around getting that old, neck? Getting old, too. Old factor. Got to be honest. Getting old. Nothing was around the neck or anything like I that? I feel like I'm on an ESPN like set here with the water in the back. I kind of like it. Uh, no, I'm just getting old, and I'm stiff and spinal cord. I think, I think I'm just fucked. 
Uh, basically, yeah. I'm being held together by duct tape at this point, I feel like. Like that's, one day, that's early. One day, you just the duct tape falls apart and all my body parts could just be on the ground. It's early for that, too. Usually, that's like a late summer thing for you. Yeah. You could be in for a world of hurt this summer. Could be. I got to start yeah, working out, that, maybe. I, I'm not working out and my body's tight. I don't know. I don't know. But that neck thing was real, Eddie, and I resent the accusation. Why don't you get the wiggle dickers to get you on a program? I can't do that program. I need like an old person program, like walk. You know, like a tie bow kind of thing? You just like walk. No, just walk. Like I'm not, I used to walk an hour to the office back and forth. I'm not walking. I got to start, you know what? I'm going to start walking. Decided right now, walk. Dave's walking. Gonna get some headphones. Why don't, listen. You, why don't you swim back there? I that tried. I'm not a great swimmer. No. Not a strong shoulders. Just not a strong swimmer. I, I was playing sports. I wasn't swimming. Well, the rich kids were at the beach. I was hitting dingers. Nice. Hit. Nice shot at the center field. It's over the center field's head, all the way back to the fence. We'll see what they do with the runner. Runner holds up at third. Portnoy's in with a double. A very clutch two out double by Portnoy. Speaking of swimming, I mean, your guy Elio. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Elio. He, he's dead to me right now. He's been so cold. And then he gives these Mr. Ice picks, the worst picks ever, and then he just bounces the Bahamas like it's nobody's concern. Can't talk about him right now. I saw him come out of the water. He looked like fucking the Loch Ness Monster. I, I puked, and I just moved on my way. <laughs> he's... He's been hurting. It, 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 it hurts he, me to see it. it. His pictures have been so – I don't know if he's improved since I – but he, he's been so bad. He's been hurt. I, I've been riding too, but I had to back off the last week or two because it's been tough. Yeah, real bad. It's been tough. Um, all right, that was explain this picture. And also, Zoltan Mesco, that was like kind of the beginning of like the Barstool curse. I think he got cut like a month later. He got cut the day we did that was when the Aaron Hernandez shit broke too. Oh, really? yeah. So he was like talking about it. He wasn't overly surprised. Let's say that. Do you? Oh, he wasn't? No. Oh, he's, about, about her Yeah, he's like, he's a weird. I mean, he didn't know double homicide. He's like, if, you know, probably if you put like, hey, someone got accused of double homicide. Here's the entire Patriots roster. Who do you think it was? I think he would have picked Aaron Hernandez. It's a big ass boat behind you. Yeah. The boats go back and forth. <laughs> Did. Was that uh? Do you remember that day? Like, did you have your laptop? Because that was back in the days where you had to fucking run and run no, and gun. I, no, you know? I probably had things programmed, and then we hustle right back to the office. That was fucking wild, man. Wild day, yeah. That was wild. Um, all right, let's do inside bar stool. Before we do, Dave, though, let's talk about Roman for a second here. And uh, most guys wipes. try different ways to last longer in bed. Thinking about baseball doesn't work. It doesn't. Roman has the swipes. There it is. I have it in my wallet, which isn't my wallet. It carries around. You can't see it. It's a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. Easy to use, fast acting. You swipe it under your dick and boom, you're ready to go. Like long lasting erections. Girls I hear don't like it when guys are like just done and like that. So Roman's solving that. Go to getroman.com slash Dave. First month of swipes for five bucks. Choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash Dave. They send to you discreetly. But who cares? Like, girls don't care. I, why would anyone care? It's like a girl probably appreciates the effort. Like, oh, you're thinking about me. I like it. So, Roman, swipes, dick hard. Everybody needs help. Everybody yeah. needs help. Everybody needs help. So, go do it. All right, inside Barstool, I saw the New York Times in a podcast that said, Rush Limbaugh wing is now the Barstool Sports Republicans. Did you see that? I think we have the clip. Show it. And then you have a lot of people who don't care about abortion, just don't like liberalism. You know, the defining blue of the Republican coalition more so than ever is just people who have something they don't like about liberalism. And that includes absolutely a lot of men who were happy with certain aspects of the sexual revolution and don't want to be lectured about norms of consent by, you know. Right, this is the Rush Limbaugh wing of the Republican Party, which is pretty significant. It's more like Rush Limbaugh is, in addition to being dead, is sort of a, a figure from another time. It's more like this columnist named Matthew Walford called it the Barstool Sports Wing of the Republican Party, okay. which I think is the more, a much more up-to-date formulation. But 
Yeah, absolutely. Those are all reasons why Republicans would not wish the overturning of Roe. And were Roe overturned, the pro-life movement would lose a lot of battles in state houses very quickly. I don't even know what that guy's saying. What does that even mean? This guy, what does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. What's he saying, Eddie? <laughs> well, he's, Rush Limbaugh's dead, so we're taking over a faction of, I guess, sp- speaking heads or like uh, followers who have a beliefs and they're kind of tying us it, in it, with it, that. I don't this know. is the problem with a lot of people like that guy who's clearly a moron. He, we, Barstool Sports, no doubt, predominantly white, middle class, like that's... Like we have a is Seinfeld like uh, you know white we have the same kind of fans so they just lump that in as far as the views every person is different I think you know I on my politics clearly I'm aware I, I interviewed Trump I do Tucker Carlson I just did Ben Shapiro's show so that I'm sure people are gonna be like oh this guy's the fucking worst um, now they don't listen to what I say and not that matters. I it, politically, I've said this a million times. If you listen or you listen to what I say, like what he's saying, Roe versus Wade, like he's saying we're like pro-lifers because I'm a libertarian. So I'm socially liberal. Like, I don't care. Get an abortion. Do what the fuck you want. It's like your life. I won't want other people. Gay marriage, go fucking have the best life ever. I don't care about that. Um, I'm financially conservative. That's a libertarian. But more importantly, and what sucks about politics, which I, without getting too deep, you don't know how I'm going to answer any question based on me being on one side or the other. I look at each issue individually and make up my mind individually on that. Very few people do that. I think a lot of people with us do it. And it's not black line. So that guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about and should be allowed to talk. I have no idea who the fuck he is. But people read, hear, say not enough people actually do any research into what they're doing. Um, and I get it. I get I'm not going to stop going on those shows. I research, make sure I'm comfortable with what they said. But the old Michael Jordan, uh, you know, red states, Blue states buy sneakers, same with T-shirts, and I don't care who you are. We want you to be exposed and find out about our politics, whatever. That guy's an idiot. And there's, by the way, like mountains of proof to back what we say up. Like it, it just, that, that person's just speaking with no knowledge of what they're speaking about. Yeah, man, there's a lot of people that just have, like, rationale, I think, at the company, and I don't think that's common anymore. Right. <laughs> or it is, but at least the people who are the talking heads don't have it. Like, have for example, like- I, on that Ben Shapiro show, which it's like, you know, he's got a huge audience. So I asked Eric, I was like, what do you think? She's like, yeah, do it. Same as Tucker. I sat down. It's like a sit-down interview, and, you know, they have two mugs, and one says, I think I drink lib- liberal tears, like, and I, I was like, I don't want that mug next to me because it's not really, I hate both extremes. Like, but no one's going to say that. I'm going to do this interview and it wasn't very political. And people will just, by association, people don't open their ears up, up enough. Yeah, I think picking a side is just one of the dumbest things in the world, too. How can you blindly say, yeah, I believe everything that this person says in this bucket? It's just right. crazy. It's yep. how, how, I don't agree with that. Like, a hundred percent with anyone. How can politics, you know, what everybody is going to answer before the question is asked based on what side of the aisle on it's fucking ridiculous. That's why politics sucks. It's insane. It's insane. Uh, speaking of some, some I, pretty real beef. Did you see the Chuck Marty Mush stuff? I, I, a little, but I didn't think it was real. What happened? I, they both said it was not real I, it seemed kind of real i talked to marty after he said it was it, it was hammed up but i don't know you could we, we, we got the clip we could play a little bit here if you want to see it like neither of them seem like real beef guys you ball fuck <laughs> hey, you your hat, <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> what the fuck else you want you fix that do it sir you're 27 you're fat and bald i'm sorry i didn't get personal until you got personal. that's a little soft to me the guy who stirs everybody up can't take himself I mean, oh, yeah, you sure. look like a quit ass if you took a man's job and put it in your mouth on Twitter. You look like a fucking ass. <laughs> Guy's job? Yeah. I'm trolling a team, dude. You're talking about my job, though, after. What? Two likes on $100,000. You, you literally 100, 100 do that, account. bro. I don't give a fuck. I've been bald since I was seven, bitch. <laughs> Is that like a good thing? To- I'm going to get your fucking teeth fixed, and then you're going to have to get your hair fixed. And your team fucking sucks, dude. So my guys, job. I know more guys than you. See, there you go. Like, you're coming after my job. So, who's the asshole now? 
just a funny joke. No, no, but so is you reading DMs for your job. No, that's, that's a funny not, joke. That's, 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 that's just like being me. I think you guys got to do rough and rowdy. Yeah. I think that's the only I answer. He's like four hundred more pounds. Yeah, you little fucking twig. <laughs> I'm skinny, you a fat. Yeah, you're skinny as fuck. When you took it personal, it wasn't troll. We were just doing trolling back and forth. That's horrible. I don't know what's going on. So what happened? Yeah, no, I don't know what they're arguing about, but it's real. That's real. Uh, he was talking. He was talking shit about the white White Sox had a no hitter going, and Marty Mush was just joking around trying to mush it. Chuck was joking around, said the Gonzaga quote, name name a player on Gonzaga, and then it got you know it just it's that your seems classic like a stupid like, reason to fight. But that was real. I, like I can't imagine it would last. But they were clearly both mad there. That wasn't acting. They're not Pacino and fucking De Niro. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I thought so too. And that's I think, definitely real. I, I Anyone who says that's not real, that's a Rico Bosco. After Rico flies off the handle, makes an ass out of himself, sends a million texts to me and Dan, he'll wake up the next day and be like, way to run the three man weave. We really got him the next day, but he's not in on it. That was real. <laughs> I love that it always refers back to Rico. Well, for real. Yeah, it was real. I mean, I think there's a point that people are going to get a little agitated here, right? Isn't this is job and. Yeah, of course. It happens right. to everybody. That seemed like yeah, a ridiculous so. reason to fight, but whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I like both guys a lot. Hopefully, it'll be all right. Uh, but speaking of that, Rough and Rowdy was mentioned. That happened on Friday, right? This Friday, Eddie? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant it. you thought it already happened. No, no, no. It's happening yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah. This Friday, West Virginia. Are you going? Yeah, I am. I'm announcing. Oh, there we go. Anything, yeah. any good wrinkles, anything to talk about there? Uh, we got a big uh, little person fight, um, and it's back in West Virginia, which is always a great spot, especially coming off that debacle of the Jake Paul fight. You know, we'll give way more entertainment. So it'll be good. It's me, Big Cat, same crew. Coach Duggs, there was a subtweet there about the unit house might be falling through. I was just looking, not, I'm not distracted. I just want to drink. Let me get water. I need a drink. Um, Yes. Hold on. Doing these podcasts, we do BFF. It's like three hours straight of talking. Oh, I had water right here. Of talking. Um, yeah, so I saw the Doug's thing fall through, and I think it's a great idea to have those two people living together. So I was like, what's going on? And I asked Doug's off the record. I was like, is this because you don't want to live with Frank or you can't have the money? He's like, no, it's the money. It's like, done. Tell me whatever you need is done. So it's going to happen. So this is going to be like... Like Barcel's just going to pay for their rent or no, what? No, we're just doing the difference. It's not that much money. They're not looking. They're not trying to stay here. They're just getting a place. I mean, how? yes, it's worth it. It's, the things we spend on for content, this pales. And we have two megawaits, the you know earthquake and typhoon, the mega powers living together. It's a no-brainer. We got, Can we cut a video, a promo video of, come on, do I have to think of everything? The mega powers, earthquake, typhoon, we need their heads on it walking into the ring. <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be good. And then I, that kind of torpedo went into. There was a lot of a lot of talk about the mini golf. Did you did, did you catch any of that? Everyone thinks they're a mini yeah, golf star. It, yeah, and I'm the only one I think who's won a mini golf tournament here. So I don't know why I'm not mentioning it. That's a classic clip clip of Blind Mike just kicking my ball, and I'm like, whoa, come on, Mike. Um, Kirk uh, was it Jared? And I don't know who else they were saying in the mix. But yeah, big dispute about who's the best mini golf player. Yeah. You, you played by Mike, though, right? Was it? No, I played the entire office. The entire office, and I won by like 30 strokes. The final results, it was a massacre. All-time video. So you would play? Still, I, there's some lines? things, and it's myself, but that clip of when I'm just standing behind Blind Mike when he kicks my ball, and I'm just like, come on. Uh, it makes <laughs> me laugh every time. It's a great, uh, great gif. Great gif. Uh, I saw KD join Million Dollars with a Game. Yeah, it's going viral because the interview KD, they're like top five players uh, that you played with teammates, and he didn't say Russ. Obviously, hates Russ, and Wallow calls him on it. I don't know KD. I don't know if that was intentional. And he's like, "Oh, I forgot him. How do you forget him?" But it's going viral. I think he did forget it on accident. I'll take him a face. How value. do you forget like, Russ? I don't know, but he did seem genuine. He's like, well, oh, he "I'm was tripping." Like, I'm yeah, tripping. either way, it's going viral. 
Well, and then I, I don't know. Why you think KD is going to get mad because they edit out where he doesn't say Russ? No, they didn't it's, edit it out. The one I saw that was posted by the main account stopped oh, we it there. edited it out. Yeah. Oh, that's that's Kareem Gaz. Somebody stirring the pot. No, gotta be. But it, us, we did no. We just took that yeah, we took the. I don't think we edited that. Okay, all right. I was gonna say that would, because that's. I mean, yeah, that's I, yeah. I could see Russ being mad about that if we did that to him. What I saw, the clip I saw originally was the full. So, I mean, that's classic twenty whatever media where it's. The, I mean, they the literally said that. Just, Wallow said he's like, you know how how Twitter and social media works. So, yeah. mm Hmm. And then uh, the, the, there was something about Trista joining Benchmob. You you're, uh, you're support that move? Well, yeah, that was obviously like Smitty and Trista did a, a bet. You get to post on each other's instances. Big Cat told me it was happening, so I was aware of it. And then I, I leaned into it. And, you know, Rico, Rico, Rico's on edge at this point. And, you know, I want to see how, how far I can push him before he drowns. He said the summer, uh, the summer squeeze out. has already started. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's a roster filled with people who he's like ruined their lives. <laughs> uh, a couple other things here before we get into listener emails. Uh, Glenny Balls attended his first wedding. Saw him dancing. I miss Balls. I miss Balls. I like when Balls is around. Good guy to have around. He's just a guy. He's an around or just be around guy. Yeah. He is, and then Barstool at Game Time hired M Rags. I'm sure you're uh, saw that. Really I caught up to speed is. on that. I, I yeah. one thing I will say, I see it time to time. People making like these grandiose announcements about joining Barstool. It's like I don't know who the fuck you are. I don't know if I'd put that in there. Like no grandiose announcements until people know who you are. Until Dave could pick you out of a lineup. No grandiose announcements. I know that kid's been grinding for a while though with game time, so he's been. He's worked with. He's like been an intern. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good for him. Yeah. Then. He's been. Yeah, I exactly. like those. I, 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 I like to be fair, to like, full time. So congratulations yeah. to M Rags. There you go. And to be fair, like you will probably wouldn't know anybody in game time, regardless, because. Well, the romper room. I know Smitty's yeah. like does something with it. Yeah. Well, congrats to M Rags. All right, let's talk about Bespoke Post, and we'll do listener emails. We'll get out of here, Dave. Uh, yeah, Bespoke Post. Spring, this spring, as you get back outdoors to explore, take Bespoke Post on all your ventures. New lineup of our essential box of awesome collections, guaranteed to upgrade your life. Um, sounds great. I love getting stuff like that. You don't always have to pick it out. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers help them customize the box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month. Ton of different categories. Free to sign up, skip a month, cancel anytime. Simple, easy. Each box only costs $45, has 70 worth of gear inside. I don't know where anyone is. That the box of awesome? Yeah, it's box love of it. awesome. Sorry, I got the weekender here. I love it. It's like a little little weekend bag. You they can throw your that clothes in. The box in. of awesome. Yeah, they gave me that. There was a couple kind bars, a couple snacks. There was like a hangover pill thing kind of thing. Thing, yep. so, so it, it nice. is that, that's a fire bag get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign them at boxofawesome.com enter the code Dave at checkout that's boxofawesome.com code Dave 20% off your first box that is good shit so I'd always like I'd use that bag to have it with me now if I if I got that one in mind great uh, weekend bag for a casino trip uh, alright listener emails one's from Ryan any chance you fly Frank the Tank down for a Dolphins game slash beach day sometime this fall. Yeah, I could see that happening potentially. No guarantees. No guarantees, but he could, you'll put him up there. He could have the... Uh, we'll see. <laughs> the Mike and Linda treatment, come and stay at the He's place. He's not with me, but maybe we'll... No. no. You, you don't like... You don't, it doesn't intrigue you at all waking up at Frank the Tank's making pancakes? No. Nope. I thought it would. Dave. Nope. This next one's from William. Do you miss doing man in the street stuff without getting recognized by people? Well, I haven't done man in the street in a long time, and it does get much harder to do it when people know who you are. I never love doing those videos. It's a ton of work, but I think they're funny when they come out. But with anything, it's the same as like Ollie G and trying to not, I'm not saying I'm nearly in that category, but anytime you're trying to do kind of man in the street, authentic reactions, 
gets very difficult when you get recognized. Is there anything you truly miss about not being able to be, you know, walk around without getting recognized? No. Like a, like a movie, like a solo movie? Or I mean, uh, yeah, that's the one thing you know, and I do like solo movies. If you go to a solo mm-hmm. movie, everyone's going to like, look at that loser. Like, what a loser. I'd rather not have my sex life like on display. It is. That won't happen if no one knows because no one give a fuck. But whatever. Uh, there's far yeah. more, I've always said, there's far more benefit to being known than has come in the good with Barstool and the advantages and the perks that to complain about it seems pretty disingenuous. Yeah. It's one from George. Uh, if you were to give up being chief of content, who is somebody you would be comfortable giving it to besides one of the original core guys? Hmm. Long pause. I'm trying to think who it could possibly be. Maybe you, Eddie. Um, I think Frankie's good. Maybe Frankie. Be a cool job. Yeah. Frankie, I think, gets what's good and funny. I mean, the problem is you can't, it's very hard to do both. Be content like Frankie's so busy, but I'm taking that aside. But I think Frankie would be good at it. And then it's got to be someone who kind of understands the brand, right? Yeah, which he totally does. But even then, I don't think I don't think that fully applies that much anymore because we're kind of all about like I like getting at every kind of getting a hand in every kind of cup now, right? Yeah, yeah. So, all right. One's from Nathan. Uh, do you go to the doctor? Do you no. do checkups? I got to do it. Glenny Balls' mother is my doctor. Really? Yeah. I didn't even know Glenny's mother was a doctor. Well. She's not a doctor, her, but her, like, she works at a doctor's office. Oh, okay, okay. I was, you yeah, yeah, yeah. for a loop there. So, you don't, there's not like, I a, gotta get is there. That like, I have to get there. It's just, I haven't. That's gotta be a pain in the dick, though, with moving to Miami and like moving all around. And it's all over the just, place. Right. I gotta get a doctor. Do you have someone that, do you have someone that takes care of that? Like, hey, Dave, you have this insurance? No. No. I may be, I don't know, I need like a personal assistant. Like not so much Barstool, but my own like personal assistant. That may come. Like I'm doing this house stuff. Like I bought a house. I'm so stupid. Like there's tenants in there. I didn't have insurance. Like I bought it. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> what do you mean? They're just, I had, that just house, had no, no insurance. Idea? I realized I'm like, I just bought this expensive place. What if it burns down? It's like, I'm fucked. It's been rectified, but it's like, I do dumb things. I need someone looking out for like the logistics. Dude, you definitely need that. I need a logistics. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. That's crazy, Dave. I know. <laughs> Cause that's, yeah, you need someone to be like, Hey, like, let's, like, let's I, set a, yeah, I use everybody. Like I'll ask spider to do some stuff. Daniela to do some stuff. Kareem. I don't have that one, like, Hey, like personal stuff almost. I don't really do that. Like schedule this, make sure the insurance is, make sure this is done. I don't have that. <laughs> like limit to me for this, for May gambling. Yeah, you know, right. Like, yes. Like, hey, sure. it's my mom's birthday. Make sure like we get her flowers on this. Yeah, I gotta be nice. You know, someone who reminds you about insurance to your mom's birthday yeah. instead of just not having insurance and only remembering Tim Cobbett's birthday. March 8th, shout out Tim Cobbett. <laughs> March 8th. Uh, this one's from Jonathan. Where do we stand in the Scott Stapp pizza review? Uh, this has been playing. What, what was it? Where do we stand in the Scott Stapp pizza review? I actually got an email today just being like, it's still in process, but no more update. That's weird timing okay. because I literally got that today. That is weird timing. Uh, last one here, Dave. Last one from Hunter. What is Gaz's official title at Barstool, and what does he tell girls that he meets at the club his official title is? Well, when I'm with them, it's just together, it, it, it's social media, head of social media and, um, you know, first employee. But he's, he's the, really the head of our social media is what I would say. Okay. And that's what he tells people to? Yeah. I, I mean, he's not like bragging, right? I mean, always, people know who he is. And again, we're together. So I'm not generally, if we meet people, most people know, believe it or not. They're like, oh, that's Dave. And he's like, yeah, I'm I, with Dave forever. And then I'll be like, yeah, I've known him for 20 years. 
Hunter was trying to come at gas here, trying to tell people that he was second in command. Is that what Hunter said he says? No, but I think he was oh. Hunter was no, no, insinuating he's not, that. No, he's not ever like that, no. Gotcha. All right, that's it. You got anything else? No. Um, that's about it. Good show? I don't know. What would you think? That was good. That was good. All right. Well, there it is, Eddie. All right, that's it for today, everybody. We'll be back next week. We'll see you then. All right, cool.